great example of it takes a village. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome to St. Christopher's Episcopal Church, and welcome to you, those that are online. You faithful that weathered the storm and helped out yesterday in Wimberley at the funeral for Lissa, um, for Dave Williford and Lissa's family. Um, so thank you. I knew we'd be kind of thin today, but um, I'm glad you're all here. And I want to really give thanks to all of you who uh, showed up yesterday and helped out. It was a, really a labor <laughs> of love, but it was a beautiful um, service. I thank you all and all those that um, hauled things out to the church there and, and also served. It was really, really lovely. And we're going to get a video of it, so we'll post that for those of you that would like to um, see the service. But thank you all for supporting our sister, Lissa, and we'll need to keep doing that in the days to come. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know you is everlasting life, grant us so to perfectly love, to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to the chariot, this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? He, and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture he was, that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in his otis. And as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, yeah. 
Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent us his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been, perfect, been perfected among us in this, that we may be, we have, may have a boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever has fear has not reached perfect perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God made their love must love their brothers and sisters also. For the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the one God, the Holy Trinity. Amen. Please be seated. Today's scriptures are so wonderful that I wish I could preach on them all. Don't worry. But that would be like two, a two-hour sermon, and perhaps that's a little much for y'all. You know, back in the day, some preachers would preach for a couple of hours, and everyone would go home and eat and come back for two more hours. Fifteen minutes sounds pretty good now, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, it's all about love. God's love. And in the Gospel and in John's letter, and the passage in Acts contains a very important message to the church. The story in Acts has been told since these scriptures were first shared with the Jesus followers, and who in turn shared these accounts around the world. Sometimes welcome, and sometimes a little uncomfortable for the Christ followers, then and now, 2,000 years later. How does God want Christians to bear witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ? The book of Acts is a good place to find out, given that it's the account of how the church first took form. This Ethiopian eunuch comes on the scene before we hear about Saul's big conversion on the road to Damascus. The Holy Spirit was active and wasn't waiting on Peter or Paul to get their acts together. No pun intended, their acts together. That was for you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, who was just called to be a deacon in last week's reading, has fled to Samaria with the other Jesus followers after the stoning of Stephen. These new deacons become the first evangelists to preach outside of Jerusalem and Judea. Isn't it interesting how the Holy Spirit works? They fled to Samaria. If you recall some of Jesus' parables, you'll also recall that Samaritans and Jews didn't really get along. Samaria was occupied by people with a history of ethnic religious conflict with Jerusalem-oriented Jews. The apostles were there not because they wanted to be, but because it was where God's love was compelling them to go. Philip was pretty successful in Samaria with many listening to his message and being baptized. But who is this eunuch? Why is he included in the early accounts of the emerging church? Why is this interaction between the eunuch and Philip important? This eunuch represents the intersectionality of all God's beloved. The eunuch is a seeker, hungry for God and responding to the scriptures which are speaking to his heart. But the eunuch doesn't fit in. The eunuch messes with our boundaries and binary understanding of what is free, enslaved, whole, mutilated, pure, impure, potent, impotent, male, female, native, foreigner. The eunuch isn't easily any of those binary definitions. But also, this eunuch was a wealthy black African from Ethiopia, educated and able to read in Greek, devout enough to study the prophet Isaiah, and also humble enough to know that he can't really understand what he's reading without guidance. With a questionable religious, ethnic, and gender identity, we're not sure he was even allowed to worship in the temple, although he'd gone to Jerusalem to do that. He must have heard the scriptures read somehow, because he was curious about what it meant. Now, the Spirit led Philip to go over to the chariot. Without pause, Philip literally chases down the carriage, breaking down the boundaries of ethnicity, class, and social status. You just don't charge the chariot of a high court official. He had no idea who was in that chariot. But for a modern parallel, 
Imagine a black wealthy diplomat in Washington, D.C. inviting a street preacher to join him in his late model Lexus for a little Bible study. <laughs> Philip asks a pretty direct question. Do you understand what you're reading? That is Philip's core mission, the reason the Spirit directed him to the chariot in the first place. Philip doesn't ask the eunuch about any of his identities, race, gender, class, none of that is relevant. The eunuch is not screened to see if he's worthy. Philip is only concerned with explaining the passage of Isaiah to him that connects to the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what matters. And none of those identities get in the way of the question, do you know what you're seeking to know by reading? That's a good question for all of us. Do we know what we are seeking when we read the scriptures? We can see why this passage from Isaiah may have, been spoken, may have spoken deeply to this eunuch who remains unnamed. It becomes intensely personal for him. Whatever privileges he has gained in the court of the Candace, he remains stigmatized in both Gentile and Jewish society, not belonging anywhere because of who he is. It's a passage about a shorn, scorned, shamed, sheep-like figure to whom justice and generation were denied. About whom is the prophet talking, the eunuch wants to know. He's a threat to normal society, and he remains cut off from any hope of being a part of a covenant community, according to Deuteronomy. Unless Isaiah is offering him hope, and unless there's a path to a more positive outcome for a stigmatized sheep. Philip could have used the law in Deuteronomy to justify excluding this eunuch, but Philip listened to the Spirit's guidance, although it did not probably make much sense to him at first. He showed up at the right time for this eunuch. Philip started with the scripture from Isaiah that the eunuch was asking about and proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ to him connecting the unjustly crucified Jesus with Isaiah's innocent slain figure. Injustice was something the eunuch could relate to. Jesus suffered unjustly and can stand with the victims of violence and stigmatization, like Isaiah's slaughtered lamb, like an Ethiopian eunuch. This message is a message of love, a message of liberation from oppression, and the unit gets it. He sees the water and cries out, what is to prevent me from being baptized? What a profound question that echoes down the ages to us sitting here today. Think for a minute of those who feel unwelcome in the church, unworthy to be loved by God. What prevents them from being baptized into the body of Christ? Heaven forbid if it is us. When the barriers to true fellowship and being welcomed into the body of Christ as Christ's own forever are broken down, nothing prevents Philip and the eunuch from entering the water and together becoming full members, siblings, in God's family. You see, we are still in the Easter season, and we are being reminded of the purpose of Jesus' death and resurrection, why Jesus saw it through to the end. The unit. Jesus' resurrection and exaltation opened the way for all who suffer, eunuchs, foreigners, outcasts, all of us, to be in the household of God. For God so loved the world, all of us. I believe 
Luke made sure this story was not forgotten when he wrote the book of Acts. The scripture that tells us about how the Jesus movement flourished and grew through the works of the disciples. When we listen to the Spirit, we aren't to become barriers to others hearing the good news and coming to know that they too belong to Christ. We are to become ambassadors for Christ like Philip and respond in humble obedience to helping others find their way home to God. We are not to deny anyone. We do not let social outcasts stand outside the door knocking. We open the door for them and welcome them into our covenant community. It was frowned on in Philip's day, and it's often frowned on in our day. But we are Easter people. We are about hope and resurrection and life for all. We are to follow Philip's example of living God's love in the world by being humble enough to listen to the guidance of the Spirit, which may take us into unfamiliar territory, which may ask us to sit with folks whom we don't really understand. But our job is to be faithful to a gospel of love and acceptance, not to police or judge who is in or out. Christ came to knock down those barriers, and we spend far too much energy and time on trying to resurrect walls rather than build a bigger table so all can have a seat at the table of our covenant community. So, let us, in the example of Philip as Easter people, be able to boldly claim for all, Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Amen. Let us now stand as you are able to recite the Nicene Creed. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all be Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. 
We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our earth may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let thy perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the Williford family. We pray for those in Sulphur, Oklahoma, who have lost their homes in the tornado. We pray for those who are alone and have no one to pray for them. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 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 we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may thrive in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of Christ always be with you. It's great to be back, I will say. Great to have you back. <laughs> um, look for, stay tuned for um, events that will highlight my trip to Greece and Paul's journey with you all. Um, you'll start seeing some messages. We're going to be doing a class in the fall called Paul in the Fall, y'all. And um, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be using um, some of what I learned on this on this pilgrimage to, to Greece with the Diocese of Texas for that. Um, Mother's Day is going to be here soon. And um, in the church, many of us are mothers to each other and to our children. And so we celebrate all who fill a role as mothers in some way. Um, there's going to be self-care gift bags to mothers of children at Sammy's house, which are Isabel runs, right? Um, and uh, they need help providing bags for 45 mothers. So the estimated cost of filling those bags is like $30. Um, 
So if you could donate the cost of a bag or even part of a bag or something like that, we're gonna be getting the stuff because they want specific things, right? Not just random. So we'll get the stuff and we'll fill the bags. Um, and y'all are also welcome to help us do that. <laughs> um, not, just, not just the $30. So we could have really a lot of fun filling up those bags. So if there's a, um, oh, she says there's a QR code on page two. Look at that, aren't we fancy? So y'all could just pull that up after church on your phone and, um, and donate that way if you wanna make it easy. Um, we need fellowship ministry helpers. Y'all, the people who are doing this are on their knees. <laughs> you know, if we had more people, then you don't have to do it that often, right? So if y'all could help men and women help out on Sunday mornings to set up or clean up or bring food, um, we, we could really um, use it. And that is a really important sign for this community when we gather over there. So let's help support it because it, it kind of is the glue that keeps us together sometimes when we break bread together and have conversations and um, find out how we each other are doing. Um, and you can contact Robin Ferguson about that or call the office if you'd like to get on the list. And the more we have, you could probably just do it once every two months or something, you know, if we could get more people signed up. So the more the merrier on that. Are there any other announcements? I've been gone, so I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know, that's not in here. So, um, hmm. Maybe the QR code does. It will be before Sunday, May 14th. Okay, we'll send that out in the connections or something, okay? If, if y'all wanna help fill those. Um, and also, uh, I think there's gonna, is, oh, Larry's not here. Is Cinco de Mayo still happening? We need volunteers for that too. Hey, um, Scott and I will be there. So <laughs> we'll be cooking and, and oh, it's Stella. And she's, she's helped make the menu, so it'll be good. Be good. Yeah, the Sunday, May 5th, the celebration of Cinco de Mayo. Um, and I think, is it still a fundraiser for Lisa, the Williford family? Yes, okay. So even more reason to come <laughs> and uh, share that. That will be... Really? It's been in the connections, I think. But do um, you want to say something, Estella? Sure. We're going to Fiesta. You can see when it happens to go on a Sunday. So we're just calling it a guest and taking it, using it as an opportunity to have a fundraiser and uh, get the, the fellowship that I think we have. I think that's pretty fun because of our team of individuals, so, and, uh, and, and we're using it as, a, as an opportunity to create a fundraiser. Yeah. Yeah, Dave was on life support for a week and he didn't have insurance, so you can add those numbers up. So we're going to help out a little bit. There's also an online fundraiser that her friends set up too that I think we've posted from time to time. So anyone else have questions about that? Yes. But it's okay. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, talk to Stella and Linda and Larry and Scott yeah, exactly. and Kathy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For the bags. For the bags. Okay. <laughs> What was so much fun the last um, last fun thing cooking? What do you call it? Holy smokers! <laughs> but um, they they really enjoyed it, and they want to use that grill that we bought to have more fun times together. So, all right, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself as a sacrifice.
which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from our creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through which we are acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Christopher and all your saints, 
we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our, pass Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal King God, God Heavenly Father, Father, you have, have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.